Welcome Restoration Community Church. Um, last week we learned about the two streams of wisdom. We had divine wisdom and we had human wisdom. Uh, human wisdom. This lesson will focus on fighting and anger. I don't know if you've made this connection yet, but it seems as if the book of James is suggesting that most of our trials and temptations are in the format of our responses to life situations. And so he's directing our attention again here in James chapter four to our responses and holding us responsible for the way that we engage in disagreements that we have with believers. So this lesson could be considered a trial, a temptation, and certainly it's going to be a challenge. Heavenly Father, we love you and we praise you and we thank you for your word and we ask God that you would open up to our hearts that we may become the people that you've called us to be and we ask it in Jesus' name, amen. James chapter four, beginning with verse one. What causes quarrels and fights among you? Is it not this, that your passions are at war within you? You desire and do not have, you murder, you covet and cannot obtain, so you fight and quarrel. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly to spend it on your passions. You adulterous people, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Therefore, whoever wishes to be a friend of this world is an enemy of God. Or do you suppose it is to no purpose that scripture says, he yearns jealousy, jealouslessly over the spirit that he has made to dwell in us. But he gives more grace. Therefore, it says, God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Submit yourself, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he'll flee from you. Draw near to God, and he'll draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Be wretched and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourself before the Lord, and he will exalt you. Do not speak evil against one another, brothers. The one who speaks against a brother or judges his brother speaks evil against the law and judges the law. But if you judge the law, you are not a doer of the law, but a judge. There is only one lawgiver and judge who is able to save and to destroy, but who are you to judge your neighbor? Differences seem to be a fact of life. Nations often go to war over different views. If we're honest, there are wars of kinds of wars on every level of life. We have differences over abortion, clean air, border control, the economy, Husbands and wives war over differences of priorities, the way they raise their children, devotion towards God and each other. Children and family wage wars over desires, rights, and privileges. James gives us practical advice on why wars begin, and more importantly, on how we can stop them. He starts off with verses 1 through 3. What causes quarrels and fights among you? Is it not this, that your passions are at war within you? You desire and do not have, you murder, you covet. You cannot obtain, so you fight and quarrel. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and you do not receive because you ask wrongly to spend it on your passions. James suggests that the war within the heart is motivated, is motivating the fighting we engage in. Passions within us often spring from selfish desires or at best, what we believe is the right thing to do. The essence of sin is selfishness, and this is simply the desire to have something we want. We all want things sometimes that we shouldn't have. We all touch things sometimes that we shouldn't touch. Selfish desires disregard what others think and focus ultimately on what is going to make me happy. James says that these desires lead to the following activities, and I think we need to take them seriously. Murder, stealing, and war. We've talked about desires before. That sin is not the thoughts that we have, but it's the behaviors that we do. These desires lead us to sinful behaviors, which James says can become murder, 
stealing, and war. It also has a negative impact on our prayer life. In this text, it says when you're praying, you pray uh, for wrong reasons, and you're praying out of the will of God. The whole focus of life can become twisted with human wisdom and desiring removing humility, forgiveness, and eternal perspective from our relationships. Jesus elevates murder. In this text, James says, if you don't get what you want, you murder your brother. What did he mean by it? Well, in Matthew 5, 21 and 22, it says, you have heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not murder, and whoever murders will be liable of judgment. But I say that everyone who is angry with his brother will be liable to judgment. Whoever insults his brother will be liable to the council, and whoever says, you fool, will be liable to the fire of hell. Jesus is equating here uncontrolled anger and fighting towards another person as actually murder. And that's exactly what happens when we get angry with someone. We cut them off. They almost become dead to us because there's no more communication in that relationship. James also says here that these things take place, this quarreling, because you covet. Covet is to take some ownership of something that doesn't belong to you. This is the last of the Ten Commandments, coveting, but its violation could make us break the other nine. And in your outline, and later, further outline and discussion in your small group, you'll go through the Ten Commandments very quickly to see how this works. People who are at war with themselves are always, or often, I should say, unhappy, unpleasant people to be around. Instead of being thankful and content, they find fault with almost everything. Often these people can't get along with anyone. James goes on to say in verse 4 through 7, You adulterous people, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Therefore, whoever wishes to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Or do you suppose it is to no purpose that the scripture says he yearns jealously, jealously over the spirit that he has made to dwell in us? But he gives more grace. Therefore, it says, God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Submit yourself, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee. The root cause of every war is really rebellion towards God. How do we wage war against God? Simply by being friends with God's enemies. James identifies three enemies that will wage war against the believer. And I think we should take note of it. The first enemy is friendship with God, or friendship with the world, I'm sorry. This requires the acceptance of the world, which can only happen when we become like the world in attitude and behavior. Soon the approval of the world is directed towards us. This leads us to loving the things of the world more than loving the things of God. In 1 John 2, 15 through 17, the Bible says, Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the desires of the flesh, the desires of the eyes, and the pride of life is not from the Father, but from the world. And the world is passing away with its desires, but whoever does the will of God abides forever. The next enemy is the flesh, in verse 5. It's simply the old nature begins to gain dominance again. Living for the flesh means grieving the Holy Spirit. And finally, the last enemy is the devil himself. The devil opposes the Son of God. God requires humility while Satan demands prideful motives and behavior. Man's ability and gifting should never be elevated above the glory of God. Romans 7, 18 says, For I know that nothing good dwells in me that is in my flesh. For I have the desire to do what is right but not the ability to carry it out. James says, knowing your enemies, knowing your passions, knowing that we all have anger and quarrels uh, within us, submit yourself to God. This is a military term that literally means get into the proper rank, stay in your lane, and unconditionally surrender to the authority and the commander and chief of our faith the Lord Jesus Christ. When areas of our life resist the surrendering to God, uncommitted believers have a hard time living 
with themselves and others. Recognize these areas are important for turning war into peace. Take a moment and ask the Lord to identify an area of your life that is insubordinate to his authority now. James 8 through 4, 8 through 12 says the following, as we're going to close in just a moment. Draw near to God, and he'll draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Be wretched and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and joy to gloom. Humble yourself, therefore, before the Lord, and he'll exalt you. Draw near to God and humble yourself. A.W. Tozer once said, Nearness to God is likeness. Think about that for a second. Nearness to God is likeness. You are closest to the Lord when you are becoming more like the Lord. Drawing near will require repentance. Sin always keeps a distance between ourself and God and other people. Humbling ourselves requires both outward humility and inward surrender. Outward humility to say, I was wrong, please forgive me. Inward humility to bend our knees to God, asking the Lord to make us his people that are offering reconciliation, not only to our brothers and sisters, but to the world around us. God hates the sin of pride. Psalm 51, 17 says the following, the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. O oh God, you will not despise. Be the bigger person. Be the person that offers reconciliation and forgiveness to those that you have had some of the most difficulties with. They may not receive your forgiveness. They may not receive your gesture but you will be pleasing God. And remember, Jesus was broken, full of humility, all the way to the cross. Even when his enemies were hurling insults at him, humility and mercy and love broke through. Oh God, help us end the endless wars within our homes, within our relationships, within the world. And may the peace of God that passes all understanding guide our hearts so that Christ may be exalted. In just a moment, you're going to work through your small group questions. Please take them seriously and let's spend some reflective time answering those questions together. May the Lord bless you.